Hello and welcome to Stockwatch, presented by me, Evan Lucas, for Go Market Securities. As always, please have a very good read through of the disclaimer on screen. Everything in this video is general in nature. None of which relied upon as any form of personal advice. Go Market Securities does not know your personal scenario, nor your personal financial goals, and therefore none of which relied upon as any form of advice at all. It's just general in nature only. This will be the last video of 2023. And with that in mind, although it hasn't completely finished, I wanna go through what has been a really incredible year because despite all of the volatility, despite all of the movement, the ASX as I speak, which is the second to last week of December, it's up 6.4% year to date. So that's obviously going all the way back to the close of business on the 30th of December in 2022. Compare that to the US at the time of speaking, it's up 23.5%. And then you look at the NASDAQ, which is up 43.4%. So we understand it hasn't been an outperforming year for the market, but there are things to highlight. The biggest lifter, and I need to point this out very clearly, the lifter, the one adding the most amount of points to the market this year is materials, not surprising, which is up 9.5%, not the leader, but biggest mover. And that's been driven particularly by BHP and Fortescue, which have absolutely powered ahead and outperformed the other peer in there is Rio, which hasn't done it. It's been dragged by things like thermal coal and also some structural issues inside its copper mining. Then you look at the best performing spaces. There's two here to highlight straight and foremost. You need to look at discretionary stocks, which I wouldn't be surprised, well, sorry, I am surprised to sit here and tell you up 18.4% as the likes of Breville, 41%, Flight Center, 30%, Super cheap, 43%, and aristocrat leisure really drive you forward. They were the big plays in that space. The biggest one was why it was information technology, 32%. And we know that. The NASDAQ, as I said before, 43.4%. That's not surprising. So Wise Tech, Zero, Next DC, they're all in the 35s, zero, 30, 52%, Next DC, 47%. The one to look at is Coden, which is not only gone into the ASX 200, it is massacred itself all the way up into the top 100. 121% it has increased in 2023, and that is because information technology had an absolute resurgence, and tech will be probably the story for next year as well. Then flip side, let's have a look at some of the worst performers. The opposite to discretionary is staples, which is again interesting considering the cost pressures on the overall household, but the least impressive there was the fact that it's down 3.5%, driven by drinks makers, Endeavor and also TWE, so Treasury Wine per State, the biggest drags, both down 20% this year and explains why Staples finished off. Woolies was actually positive, but not enough to offset the big drags in that space. The other one is also energy, 4.2% falling in the energy sector. Woodside was down, but not as much as what's happened in coal. The collapse of thermal coal prices has meant the likes of Whitehaven, New Hope, Yang Coal, et cetera, are all down between 30 and 25% respectively, and they are the biggest drag. So it's been an interesting year, and one that has been all over the shot, I understand that, but the conclusion is this, that markets can look through volatility quite well, that long-term investing can certainly and does help your overall wealth. And let's look into 2024 with that kind of idea, because it will be another year of investors looking to improve their wealth for the long term.